After getting the mechanics working well, reconditioned, and fully functional, uh, now it's time to look at the electronics of the machine. And we were surprised, well, not really surprised, but uh, what we discovered is that there's a lot of noise in one of the tape preamp playback sections. Uh, in the source mode, of course, we're looking at the source input, not looking at the tape, not looking at the, the uh, tape head preamp. If we go into the tape mode, as you can probably hear that, sounds like lightning in the background. This is, uh, in this mode, it goes from the tape head through a three transistor preamp to the output. And that's where the noise is uh, originating, is in the tape preamp. Bypass it, of course, it goes away. Everything else is quiet. So we have to dig a little bit further and find out what um, it's conducive to a noisy transistor. We're going to have to dig into the tape preamp and see if we can uh, determine what's going on here. What we have here is a excerpt from the service manual. A simplified uh, diagram of the uh, audio stage, the tape uh, playback preamplifier. It's a three transistor amplifier, about 30 dB a gain, which is uh, significant. It's quite a quite a high gain um, circuit. Of course, that would indicate that if there is any noise, uh, this is certainly going to amplify it. And my guess at this point is the noisy transistor is at first device Q105, uh, the third transistor on the left. And that transistor is interesting. It's a very high gain, low noise Toshiba device, TSC732, and it has an HFE of about uh, minimum 200 and a noise figure of about 0.5 dB. So it's a it's a pretty noise free, quiet, high gain device. So my guess is that's the device that's um, that's causing us the problem. As an added note, whenever you have a high gain stage like this, it's almost always that first amplifier that uh, determines the noise of the entire stage. And that's why that first transistor is an extremely low, low noise device. And that determines the noise factor of the entire gain stage. Well, those are that uh, 2SC732 transistor. I didn't have anything in stock that would, uh, or a cross-reference. It's a pretty specialized device. It's extremely low noise, half a dB, 0.5 dB, and an HFE of about uh, minimum 200, so it's, it's pretty specialized. And I didn't have anything in stock that would even come close to a cross-reference. So I ordered a selection of them, and as far as transistors go, they're not cheap. Uh, the best I could do was about... Um, in this quantity it was about dollar uh, twenty a piece, so and it took about three weeks to get them in the get them in the mail, and that's something you should uh, keep in mind too is something in the front end that has that kind of a noise figure and that kind of a gain. You really don't have much of a choice as far as uh, cross referencing or replacing. After running for a while, high-level crackling seems to have dissipated substantially. Uh, we still have the a very low-level noise on the left channel, and it's only evident when you turn the gain all the way up. If we uh, get some gain on the, on the external amplifier, you can hear the waterfall noise. And it doesn't even show up on the VU meters. It's only when the gain is all the way up. And in some positions on the level control, which sounds like a noisy pot, but it really it seems like um, the stage is not is going is in, not stable or instable. Instable. Like right there. So, we have to investigate the... But again, it's not, uh, it's not high enough to even indicate on the VU meter. And of course it's on the tape pre-amplifier. And it's only on the left channel. After identifying 
the noisy stage, I need to figure out the pinout of the that first transistor to a C732. So what I'll do is, um, or what I did, is make a little location drawing where each of the devices is. Then I took uh, some voltage readings and identified the emitter base collector of that first device. So I know exactly because the, uh, the 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 actual case of the transistor is different from the devices that I've purchased. We'll just have to identify, we identified the base emitter collector, made a little drawing, and now we'll take and uh, replace that device. And of course, you can hear the waterfall noise in that stage, and we'll take and investigate that further by replacing that device. Now that we pulled that first device out, that um, first high gain amplifier, 27C732, and we got that device out of there. That channel is fully quiet now. That uh, seems to be, or was, a good suspicion that that was the culprit uh, making the noise. And now we'll replace it and uh, hopefully we'll have a nice quiet channel. I pulled out the original transistor from the uh, noisy channel, the first uh, 732, and put it on a small prototype board. And the reason I did this is, well, with my uh, selection of new 732s, wouldn't you know it, the one I replaced in, in the uh, original circuit was noisier than the original. So now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to grade out the selection of 732, 2SC732s that I have and see if I can find a quiet one. But I, in the meantime I have the original transistor here that I pulled out of the circuit and of course emitter base collector being taken off the circuit board onto a prototype board and you can hear the, you can still hear that waterfall noise with the original transistor. And with one of the newer transi newer replacement transistors, it's uh, substantially quieter. Getting close to the base lead, of course, it still has a lot of a lot of good gain. But this new device is substantially quieter than the original. So I think we've uh, come across a good one. Uh, the original, wouldn't you know it, one of the ones that I pulled out of my new stock was noisier than the original. And I think we... <laughs> what, are the, what are the odds of that? 1 in 20, or 1 in 10 I think I have, something like that, is noisier than the original. So I'm going to have to grade out all the uh, ones I have here and see where we're at, but the one I've got here in, in the circuit now on the proto board is a lot quieter. I've got the gain all the way up and you just barely hear anything. Of course you get close to the uh, base lead you get the AC hum of course, but we got a nice quiet one here so we're going to grade all the other ones out and see what, uh, see what we have. Now after grading out and finding the lowest noise transistor in my collection of new 732 transistors. We replaced it and the channel is dead quiet now. Little residual background, of course that's expected with anything, but that's maximum gain. And before we had our hideous waterfall and now with the new transistor it's completely quiet. Okay, now with that, uh, the new uh, transistor and device, it would be a good thing to check to make sure that uh, both channels have the same levels and gain. And what I've done is I've recorded a tone, about a thousand hertz tone, at uh, 0 dB, or 0 VU actually. We should be able to play back the tape with the output being set equally on both channels, and we should have the same output level. And we do! So the tape preamps on both channels are working virtually identically. So that proves that the new um, proves that the new device, the new transistor, is working exactly the same as the other channel. I think we've got a full success here. 
Now we'll try a full full playback test after we have everything reassembled. Got some music recorded here, but and this is um, supposedly royalty-free YouTube music, so we shouldn't have any trouble with that. I've already pre-recorded, so now we'll just do a playback. <laughs> And there's my test tone that I recorded earlier as well. So, we're fully functional.